and I saw this black image come across my face. <laughs> Dunbar was going to whip him up pretty good. It is dark, as you can tell. Not your normal cross timbers bison video, but uh, I am currently uh, trying to catch a bison in the dark on the loose. Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. What a interesting morning, needless to say, <laughs> as you can tell. I gotta tell you about that. Just a, just a very interesting morning. It wasn't very long, but we got it taken care of. So what I was doing was actually, I was taking two animals to uh, the processing up in uh, Northern Oklahoma, uh, which I do here and there you don't hear me talk about it very much but uh we take ours to a certified facility up in northern oklahoma it's about a three-hour drive for me so i've got to catch those bulls in the dark get them loaded and and drive three hours so i've got to leave at about 5 or 5 30 in the morning to make it to the processing plant in time uh that i'm supposed to be there well i pulled in and <laughs> eleanor's bull is in there and uh he it's dark and it's hard to see and i pulled the trailer in there it's so long it's 24 foot trailer and i know that they're in there but i, I couldn't see them when i first pulled in because i know that he may dart out if the gates open well sure enough i pulled in there i was making my way back to shut the double gates and i saw this black image come across my face and then he appeared in the light and i was like oh my gosh i knew exactly who it was because he is just like his mom he is very interesting and so <laughs> i said screw it i'm not gonna chase you around right now i'm gonna load these bulls and i gotta get going i know you guys are thinking well you're just gonna leave him out there no so what i did was is i got the bulls loaded that took like five minutes so i hopped in my mom and kevin's um atv i ran down in the pasture well i didn't run out the pasture I went in the front yard that's where he was first he was in the front yard and then he took off and went south, which was good because north there is a road, a main road, a county road. And uh, so he took south and uh, I, let him, I let him run because it's dark, obviously he could run through a fence and whatnot. And I thought, well, okay, maybe he'll go where the Dunbar herd is because he probably can smell the females and heat and smell the herd. And so sure enough, that's where he went. And uh, I went down there and I happened to, he was just kind of near a gate. And so I was able to uh, pretty much just open uh, the gate. And luckily the big herd stopped at the feeder and they were kind of messing around. They didn't come up like they typically would to the gate. And uh, I was just able to open the gate and shoo him in. Whew. My day just got a little bit better. All right, Eleanor's bull <laughs> is back and reunited at 5.30 in the morning. Not the way I wanted it, but he's got. After that dumb bar, I knew it was gonna be interesting. I saw it was in the dark, so I had my, my spotlight on him and stuff, but uh, I knew Dunbar was going to whip him up pretty good, or I say pretty good, but rough him around a little bit. Dunbar's not used to having another bull in his uh, pasture with him. I already tell you who's not going to be happy is that guy right there, Dunbar. But he's so much younger, Eleanor's bull. He's only two. Yeah, he's getting pushed around by the cows already. <laughs> Well, hopefully I don't come back and we have fence problems. But old Dunbar, he's getting worked up. Oh yeah, he's gonna run him off. You guys probably can't see this very well, but Dunbar is currently running 
uh, Eleanor's bull off. They're gonna run for a little bit, but I'm glad he's caught. Just an interesting morning, needless to say, uh, for sure. And, and and you don't ever want to mess with bison in the dark. And my bison producers out there, if you watch, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just don't ever want to do that. Anyways, uh, Kevin and I are building fence today, but uh, a couple other things I wanted to show you. We got a whole bunch of hay. Um, I got 50 more bales of hay. Uh, Kevin bought some hay as well, which is good. We are stocking up for winter. And as you know, we are in a major drought here in Southern Oklahoma and we still haven't had rain all summer. I think most we had is two tents. Uh, is all we've had basically. Um, so uh, it is very, very dry here. I've had to put out a bale of hay um, for the yearlings and for the big Joe herd. So nothing's new on that end, uh, no rain. We are building fence and we are hustling and we're trying to get the big Joe herd out on grass, on fresh grass, untouched grass for over a year. It's had a recovery time. So that's what we're hustling to do is get that done. And yes, we've stocked up on hay. Kevin has bought some hay too. And um, I got 50 more bales that we can add to, which means we have about a hundred now. And so that's where we're at is hay. Luckily just I have a good neighbor, Richard, who I talk about all the time. He builds hay around this part, uh, you know, around here. And uh, he asked if I wanted some because he knew I needed some. So uh, luckily he got me 50. Thank you, Richard. And uh, I purchased those from him. So Something else I want to show you guys I'm excited about. We just got done. I'm gonna step in the Ponderosa barn here. It's the first time I've been around this and, and done this, or then I didn't do this, but um, check this out right here. Let me show you too. Just a little update on the office. It is spray foamed. Some of it's got like two, two and a half inches. Some of it's got like almost eight inches of insulation, which is awesome on this west wall, which is where the sun hits and stuff. And you can already tell the difference about an hour and a half after he sprayed it, I walked in here and I could tell the difference. It's not humid or anything. It is a controlled temperature in here and we got a lot of insulation going on it. So very excited. And now we'll be able to start finishing this office with the interior. We'll put some drywall up and all that stuff. We'll put some storage on top. So. We still got a lot of work to do. I did want to share the update with you on getting all this spray foamed. This is awesome stuff and uh, we got a lot of it. And the guy that did it, um, did a really good job of trimming it up for us um, with his machete looking thing uh, so that we can just come in here and put our drywall up. Did a great job. What's up, Hoss? Going back, brother. Back on up. Back on up. God, you need to lose your hair, sister. Back up, buddy. Back. Puppy, better watch it. Hoss always tries to get through. Come on, Elsa. We're gonna have to do this a different way. Come on. Yeah, unfortunately, we're having to put out hay. It is August and we're putting out hay. This is a second bill to these yearlings. I just got that feeder filled up as well and we're just getting by here in this 20 acre pasture and um, I don't know how else to describe it this just flat out sucks never had to really put out hay this early
All right, guys. You can see here, we got some extra bales of hay. Like I said, Kevin bought 17 of these. And uh, what I'm gonna do right now, is start stacking some of these up, getting them stacked up here. Here's our working area. This is where I loaded out Big Joe. You can see all that stuff. And then so I've already stacked some of them. And uh, I'm gonna get more of them stacked up and get them kind of out of the way. We'll put them right here. A what? Shit <laughs> I'm cutting with a pair of boat. Cutting. Is that the breeze? What's on the ice? Don't work on the fence. I've rigged me up here. Got a extra h post that was pulled out of the ground here on this property and so got me a nice little maneuver here i'm gonna haul it down there i'm gonna stop and pick up some t-posts we're gonna get this down in a pasture three and use it on the new fence line So on this entire fence project, um, we've been repurposing a lot of stuff. For example, right here, this is an H post that was used on this property, like I said, and then I just brought it down here. The bad part about reusing some of this stuff, like the T post, I had to straighten a bunch of them up, which is no big deal. Those T posts can last forever. And then the bad part about using H braces uh, already pre-made H braces um, like this one here this is a two and three eighths um, is you got to get your holes obviously the right width according to your H brace but the depth is the, probably the most important part because um, this is the hard part is getting this thing level so it looks relatively level right now both of my holes I measured um, we're equal that doesn't always mean it's gonna be perfectly straight so um, that's is the hard part with pre-made H braces 
is getting them level and in the ground uh, because typically we would set a post set a post and then weld the uh, middle up together to make the H brace that is much easier but you're doing that also out in the field which may not be easier to some people uh, it may seem easier to have it pre-made bring it out here but uh, you just hope you can get it level uh, with your holes um, this one doesn't look too bad it looks very level um, once I get some concrete down here and some water I'll get this part set so that's kind of where we're at uh, with this this is the last one on this stretch you can see this fence here is just not in good shape and i've torn some of it down as you can see here but uh something kevin and i've been talking about i don't know if you guys have ever seen these right here but these are called uh stays and uh that's what we call them anyways but um kevin warned me about these we don't use them and the reason is is uh when your fence gets torn like this it's very hard to stretch uh, with those stays and they ain't worth a dang see what these people did on this fence basically is there's a t-post here and there's a t-post way over there that looks about 25 feet apart um, that will not be sufficient for bison so what we're doing is we are going to reuse this but we have to cut out the stays because they cause a lot of problems and you can't stretch your fence as well but see look at this this is a prime example right here of what's going on of bending it what this stay has done and look at this how wobbly this is now it's an old fence whatever it's part of it but what we're going to do is try to cut these stays out eventually and then we're going to stretch this wire and we're going to um tie it to the to new H brace that will be there and then uh, what we'll do is come back once we've tightened some of these wires we'll have a straight line and we'll be able to drive T post in here and it looks like we're gonna have to drive two or three uh, new T post in here so that's kind of the idea of what's going on uh, and where we're at on this but uh Guys, we've already put out hay, and I know I'll keep talking about it, but um, uh, I really didn't know how weather really affected us until I became a, a bison owner, a bison rancher. You know, when you're in high school playing football, you always worry about the weather because um, it, you're thinking about practice and when you got to put the pads on, you know. That was really the only time I ever worried about the weather. And, and you know, if I was hunting, and what not in the winter time of course you worried about it but other than that um you didn't worry about it and uh so in high school that was really the only time but now that uh you know i'm an owner of animals and that we raise these awesome animals uh you're faced with these conditions and, and you hear your grandpa or your dad talk about it and, and your parents talk about it uh, what they went through and what they've gone through during uh, you know, back in the old days and whatnot and so uh, we're facing uh, some tough times right now and I'm already having to put out hay in uh, August which is not fun and I know there's other people out there that are doing that right now uh, northern Oklahoma I was up there the other day and uh, it's green up there currently it's two or three hours south it is it's brown and that's where we are so I've got the feed bin uh, back filled up for the yearlings to help uh, supplement them. I've been putting out hay for the big Joe herd right here for these guys. And um, I know you guys are missing the Dunbar herd, the original herd. I'm going to go over there and visit with them next. So stay tuned for that. We'll be on the next video. I will show you Dunbar and we will check on them. Kevin is awesome and has been helping me take care of them as I've been trying to get this fence done and he's also come over here and helped me on this fence so uh part of ranching part of life like i always say and there's nothing you can do about it and so uh we're doing our best to uh, get these guys on some grass um but even even at the end of the day um you can't control the weather and uh we're just happy that we have water and uh that we do have hay and we're stocking up currently uh, for more hay for the winter <laughs> i say winter it's summertime and we're putting out hay 
um, and um, you know I'm able to get supplement feed which costs more money at the end of the day but um, this is a hard time and we're trying to keep our animals as healthy as possible so thank you guys for watching us and we will see you soon